This is Lynn of Havilah, Psalm 39. It's 13 verses. David wrote it and passed it along to Jedithan, as verse 1 is about to say. He was one of the chief musicians, 1 Chronicles 16, 37 to 42, verse 1. For the chief musician, for Jedithan, a psalm by David, I said, I will watch my ways so that I don't sin with my tongue. I'll keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good. My sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. While I meditated, the fire burned. Comment in verses 1 to 3, David is before the wicked, meaning he's in the presence of wicked men. He doesn't enjoy their company. Probably they have a profane mindset that turns him off. Anything he might say in their presence wouldn't be appreciated, so he put a bridle on his tongue in verse 1 and was mute with silence in verse 2. He doesn't want to join in with them and sin with his tongue in verse 1. In verse 3, though he was silent, his heart was hot within him, a fire burned within him, so much that he had to say something, but it would be to God. Here's what he said coming up, still in verse 3. I spoke with my tongue, Yahweh, show me my end. What is the measure of my days? Let me know how frail I am. Behold, you have made my days hand widths. My lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely every man stands as a breath, Selah. Surely every man walks like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up and doesn't know who shall gather. Comment David's minds on the brevity of life, the frailty of it, and the futility of it. Life short, uncertain, and everything a man does comes to nothing. If he gathers wealth, someone else will haul it off. There's no mention of an afterlife in this psalm or of any kind of divine reward. David believed in all that, so we might say he's writing not from his own perspective, but from the perspective of someone who's searching, who's realizing how little there is out there if this life is all there is. It's like the mood Solomon was in when he kept saying, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. This is a person, maybe a youth, who's asking God, who am I and what am I doing here? Coming up, David, or the character he's portraying right now, feels like God's chastising him and pressing in on him to mold him in some way, but he has no idea where this is going. He just wants some relief, verse 7. Now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Don't make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I didn't open my mouth because you did it. Remove your scourge away from me. I'm overcome by the blow of your hand. When you rebuke and correct man for iniquity, you consume his wealth like a moth. Surely every man is but a breath. Selah. Hear my prayer, Yahweh, and give ear to my cry. Don't be silent at my tears. For I am a stranger with you, a foreigner, as all my fathers were. O oh, spare me that I may recover strength before I go away and exist no more. Comment in verse 8, the line, Don't make me the reproach of the foolish, probably makes more sense in the NET translation. Quote, Don't make me the object of fool's insults. In verse 9, it was God who put him in this frame of mind, made him mute, and put him in contemplation of all this. Quote, I was mute, I didn't open my mouth because you did it. End quote. He has the feeling God's forcing him to be quiet, to repent, and think about life. At the, end of the, at the end of the psalm, which is verse 13, the speaker's perspective is still limited to this life. Quote, O oh, spare me that I may recover strength before I go away and exist no more. End quote. But that's not the correct perspective. Jesus said, quote, If a man keeps my word, he'll never taste of death. End quote. There's no such thing as existing no more, as the speaker said in the last verse. God's promises of life, health, prosperity, and so forth make no sense whatsoever in a world that always ends every time with cardiac and respiratory arrest. We can't make sense of this world until we know that it's a preparation and proving ground for the next. So may God put us all in a contemplative mood, as in this psalm, if we haven't been there already, so that we begin praying, as in verse 7, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you, end quote. That's the starting point to learning where all this is going. Psalm 40 is next.